the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me the day of my sin. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto all of my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and I sincerely repent of them, and I pray you of your boundless mercy. And for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings of the death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a call that arranged servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead, by the command, of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The input for this morning is Psalm 2, verses 6 to 12. We will pray Psalm 2, verses 6 to 12. Responsibly have first, I have first, and I will begin. As for me, I have set my king on Zion, my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord has obtained the anointing son of the day I have begun. Ask of me, and I will make the nations your heritage. And the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron. And dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Now therefore, O kings, be wise. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in the way, for his wrath is quickly kindled. Blessed are all who take their hand to him. Let us continue by singing the glory of pottery as is found in the top of the page in the front of the Oh. Mm -hmm.
Therefore, mercy make us co-heirs with our King of His glory, and bring us to the fullness of our inheritance in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, the Lord, who is the reign of you with the Holy Spirit, of God, now and forever.
after six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Rise, and have no fear. And they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. And as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus commanded them, Tell no one the vision, until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Jack for today's meditation comes to us from the Gospel lesson. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here. One for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elijah. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So these words penned by St. Matthew the Apostle of the Inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We find a theme of this meditation is, it is good. In the beginning, God the Father spoke to his living voice and word, his son, his potential, his power, his dinners, carried forth by the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, and creation came into being. After each day of creation, the Elijah wants one step back and look at what he had created. And he said, it is good. After six days of creating, he then created the seventh day, the Sabbath, and sanctified it as a holy day unto himself. A very special day where man could rest in the Lord by worshiping the Lord. By worshiping the Lord, he regenerated, refreshed, restored, renewed for the trials and tribulations of the six days which lie ahead. And after creating the seventh day, the Almighty had one step back and he looked at the vast array of all his creation. And he said, It is good. It is very good. Was. Everything created in just the right time, in just the right order, in just the right way, just the way it was supposed to be. And it was good. It was <coughs> In the Gospel lesson for today, we find our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the disciples, Peter, James, and John. And it was after six days. So it was on the seventh day, the Sabbath. And Jesus took Peter, James, and John up on a mountain. And suddenly, without warning, without notice, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was changed and transformed, transfigured and glorified before Peter and James and John. Now, with Moses appearing on one side, and the prophet Elijah appearing on the other <coughs> side. Text tells us that both Moses and Elijah were talking with Jesus. St. Luke, the blessed apostle, tells us that what they were talking about was the exodus of Jesus. His death, his resurrection, his ascension in heaven 40 days after that. It's all the talk of heaven, don't you know? Here we find Moses, and here we find Elijah, who had lived and died a long time ago. But they believed in Jesus as the promised Messiah. So now they were resurrected from the dead, because Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And God the Holy Spirit showed up in the form of the water vapors of the cloud, the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah of the Lord. And the Heavenly Father spoke to the cloud and said, So there is no mistake. So there is no misunderstanding. So nobody ever gets it wrong. So everybody always gets it right at all times, all places, all spaces. This is my son. The one who I know. The one with whom I am well pleased, followed by the command, now listen to him. And it was on the Sabbath, and it was good, because here we find the divine service. Here we find the church on earth with Peter and James and John, and along with the church in heaven, Moses and Elijah focused upon and centered upon the glorified Christ. Also, 
gathered with God the Holy Spirit and God the Father. And it was good. It was very good. It was heaven on earth. There was no frustration, no depression, no despair, no heartache, heartbreak, sorrow, or sadness. It was heaven on earth. Just peace, joy, and happiness. And it was good. It was so good that Simon Peter said to the Lord, Hey, Lord, let's just stay up here. What do you say? I do not want to go back there to the fallen and broken world. I do not want to go back there where there's all that frustration, depression, depression, despair, disease, and death. Lord, I would much rather stay up here where there is just peace and joy and happiness have it on her. So what do you say, Jesus? Let's just build three tents. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. And tell you what, Jesus, we'll just stay up here. What do you say? And here we find it was bad. Really bad. But it's bad because that's what Simon Peter wanted. That's the way he wanted things to go, to stay up there in the Mount of Transfiguration. It was bad because Jesus and Simon Peter and James and John had to come down off the mountain, go back into the fallen, broken world, because there was still work they needed to do. Jesus had an appointment with the cross on Good Friday, the empty on Easter Sunday. Peter, James, and John were disciples who would go on to be apostles. They had to be eyewitnesses. They had to see Jesus and hear Jesus suffer and die upon a cross on Good Friday. And then see and hear him after he was resurrected from the dead on Easter Sunday, and for 40 days, and then he ascended into heaven. And the reason the eyewitness thing was so important is this reason. So if anybody came up to them and said, oh, come on, you really don't believe all that stuff you're saying about that Jesus had to do, that he was fully God and fully man, that he was crucified and died upon a cross on his body, that he bodily resurrected from the dead on Easter Sunday, oh, come on, you really don't believe that, do you? Peter and James and John and the rest of the apostles would say, well, as a matter of fact, yes, I do. Because I was there. I saw it. I heard it. And not just me, but also the rest of the apostles. And Peter and James and John, as they went on to be apostles, they'd have to carry on the work of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ after his death and resurrection and ascension to heaven. As the apostles, they had to be the ones to go out and preach God's word in truth and purity. I administer the sacraments as this is by Christ, so that believers could come to faith and believers could grow in the faith, so that all people in all times and places and spaces would know of the good of our God. So it was bad. His sacrifice <coughs> was to stay on the mountain and have things go his way, but God had already decided that things are going to go that way over there, and that's the way they went. So you and I do not think too little of Simon Peter. Let's realize that we are made of the same material he is. How many times do we hope and pray that things are going to go this way over here for our benefit and for our good? Only to find out, the Almighty has already decided, things are going to go that way over there, and that's the way they're going to go. But now we did not get our way. So now we're angry. Mad. And upset. As we were angry, and mad, and upset. We could not see our God as being the ultimate.
all-knowing God, the all-powerful God, full of love and grace and mercy, who knows what's best for you and best for me, even for all eternity. We're all like the people flesh. We're all like Simon Peter. Every one of us, and every one of us falls short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. As we look at what happened on the Mount of Transfiguration, we find that it's almost the same thing that happened at the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The season of Epiphany begins with the baptism of Jesus. The season of Epiphany ends with the transfiguration of our Lord. So there was Jesus being baptized in the waters of the River Jordan by St. John the Baptist. Holy Spirit then appeared in the form of a dove descended upon Jesus and anointed Jesus and filled Jesus with himself. This was a sign. This was a mark. That this Jesus is the Christ. This Jesus is the promised Messiah. The one set aside the work required for the forgiveness of sins and our salvation. And the Holy Spirit, God the Father spoke to the cloud and he said, so no one gets it wrong. So no one is confused. So no one gets it mixed up. So everybody gets it right in all times and places and spaces. This is my son, the one whom I love, the one with whom I am well pleased. And the reason the Heavenly Father said that was because he was pleased when Jesus was baptized. Because he was baptized. Jesus took upon himself all the bad, all the bad of your sins and my sins and the, and the sins committed against us. All the bad of all the sins of all the people and all the world, by all what it were indeed. All the bad of the old evil Paul, with all his lies and all his temptations and all his deceptions. All the bad of death. And all that goes along with death, the suffering, the pain, the frustration, the despair, and even death itself. As baptism of Jesus, who is good, the one who is found to be without sin, took all that bad upon his shoulders. It was the waters of the Jordan River that drove Jesus to the cross outside the holy city of Jerusalem. At the cross, Jesus, who is good, the one who was found to be without sin, having on his shoulders all that bad, and allowing all that bad to overpower him, overcome him, and kill him dead on a cross on Good Friday. So when he was resurrected from the dead, he who is good could overcome all the bad. He who is good could cover all the bad of sin with the good of all of his righteousness. He who is good can overcome all the bad of Satan with the good of his agape, unconditional love. He who is good can overcome all frustration, oppression, despair, suffering, and pain, and death, with resurrection, and new life. And it is good. It is very good for me, for you, even for can't help but notice in the lessons for today the importance of mountains. Mountains are very special places for our God. It is God who comes down and he visits men upon the mountains <coughs> to provide for them what they need the most, when they need it the most, how they need it the most. We find our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ dying upon a cross on Mount Calvary. So you and I can have life and forgiveness and salvation. We find Jesus with Peter and James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration so that they would have more insight and understanding as time would go on and they would have to witness the death, resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament lesson for today, we find Mount Sinai. It was Moses who went to the top of Mount Sinai 
so God could give him the Ten Commandments. In the Old Testament lesson for today, we find Moses with the elders of Israel on Mount Sinai, in his presence, listening to his words and eating and drinking of the Lord and with the Lord. It was a special type of Holy Communion for them in that time and place and space. It would only happen once. But it's what they needed the most, the way they needed it the most, at the time they needed it the most, and how they needed it the most, so they could go on and be good leaders of Israel. Now it comes down to you. Now it comes down to me. After six days, the seventh day, on the seventh. And here we come to the mountain, to the house of the Lord, where our God comes down from above and from the outside. Provide for us what we need the most, when we need it the most, and how we need it the most. And it's here we find the divine service. In the German diocese, God's divine service to you. It's here that we find heaven on earth. As you gather together to partake of the blessed sacrament of Holy Communion, we find the baptized and the faithful, the church on earth, along with angels and archangels, and all the company of heaven, all those who have been called home before us, Moses, Elijah, Grandma, Grandpa, Mom, Dad, Husband, Wife, Sister, Brother, <coughs> Son, Daughter, Best Friend, all gathered to be with us. Because this is where we find the communion of saints. And as we partake of the Blessed Sacrament of Communion, we come from the presence of God, and God speaks and we listen. Take a deep. This is my body given for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Take a drink. This is my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. So that you and I can be changed. So you and I can be transformed. So you and I can be made anew. No longer conform to the pattern of the fallen and broken world. So that you and I can die in the death of Christ be resurrected in the resurrection of Christ. So you and I can be law in Christ and gospel in Christ. So you and I can be brought down in Christ and are be raised up in Christ as we are washed and cleansed and purified of all of our sins and all the sins committed against us. And at the same time, reconciled. Now at peace with God. Now at peace with ourselves. Now at peace with our neighbor. As you and I eat of his body and drink his blood, you and I partake of the body and blood of Christ that is living from the life, died upon the cross, and resurrected from the dead. That which has conquered all of sin and all of Satan and all of death. As you and I partake of the Holy Meal, the Holy Communion, you remember that the early church fathers called it the meal of immortality. Good medicine provides healing to the body, the spirit, the mind, and the soul. And it is good. It is very good. We come to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to remember the command that the Holy Father gave on the Mount of Transfiguration. Listen to we're in the Lord's house on the Lord's day. His heavenly Father again speaking through his Son, his voiceless word carried forth by the breath of God. And here we find ourselves in the presence of Jesus the Shepherd. To hear the voice and words of the Master. So he can tell us what we need to hear the most, how we needed to hear it, and when we need to hear it. This day he comes to us and he says the same thing to you and me that he said to Peter and James and John on the Mount of Transfiguration. Do not fear. Arise. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Arise. Go out there to the fallen, broken world because the Almighty has work for you to do to exercise the duties and responsibilities of your vocation. To exercise the duties and responsibilities of the offices God has given to you. 
Christian husband, Christian wife, Christian father, Christian mother, Christian son, Christian daughter, Christian symbol. He has called us to be at this place in time, the final days, where all of society is coming apart at the seams, where all of culture is coming apart at the seams, where all the world is coming apart at the seams. You don't believe me, just go out there and look. Out there is a darkness, a frustration, depression, despair, and death. And that's where God sends us, out there, in these final days. With the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, do not fear. Do not be afraid. And this is why. As he says, I am with you. I am with you all day and all the way. I am with you to guide you and direct you. I am with you to watch over you, take care of you, and provide for you. Always in the right way, at the right time, in the right manner. Not so you can just have fuzzy feelings and warm feelings for Jesus, but so that you will know that as Jesus is with you, you do not have to fear you do not have to be afraid. He is with you all day and all the way. He is with you today, tomorrow, and even for all of you. And it is good. It is very good. Very good for me. Very good for every one of you. Good. Today,
all stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for all people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, wife, uh, Jacob Wagner, and Ellie Dureski, we beg you for your goodness toward them, to be grateful that you have mercifully given unto them strength, friends, relatives, pledge of all, your gospel promise of peace and forgiveness. Dear Lord, as these your servants mark the passing of one year and the beginning of a new year, draw your pledge of mercy upon them through your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. What a wife, that, Cliff Bach, Bobby Gall, Jimmy Pullman, Wayne Needham, Noel Rapp, Pauline Prex, Janet Suckwich, Sheila Hall, Arthur Rapti. I greatly receive healing and strength to you. They have lost by you bank for the sickness and health. I grant the strength to accept your will for their daily care lives, visit them and their afflictions, and empower them through your word and the promise of your love. Lord, in your mercy. All the Lord's creators, and we praise you for blessing the earth to make it fruitful. Bring forth and abundance whatever is needed to support our lives. Cross, we implore you with the work of former ranchers and grant us a growing weather of sunshine and moisture. We hope that a seed time and a gathering of the fruits of the earth, thus proclaiming your goodness with thanksgiving. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we can all we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Let us continue with the prophets and the service of the sacrament. Starting out on page 194 in the heart of the animal. The Lord be with you. Thank you. 
cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This is I'll be drink it. Remember, it's just me. The peace of the Lord with you always.
to the same in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. To be described in front of the Lord, the drain of you and the Holy Spirit, and God now and forever. Give you 